Somebody just told me that Ted wasn't a real person, <laughs> which is a really big bummer because I was looking forward to meeting him. <laughs> but perhaps the talk doesn't change. Perhaps that's the whole point. Once upon a time, our stories were told, huddled around the fire, watching the warm glow of the flickering flame. Well, for thousands of years, our ancestors would tell their stories and pass them down from generation to generation like a cherished heirloom. But that would change with the advent of electricity. See, a hundred years ago, we would trade the warm glow of the campfire for the glow of the television screen. Later, the technology would continue to advance. Black and white yields to color, film to digital, 2D to 3D. It's a continuum of innovation. Though we don't sit around the fire as much as we used to, perhaps there's a lesson in that, that the stories have never changed. It's stories of love, stories of hate, stories of the human condition. Today, a new transformative force challenges once again the very fabric of storytelling. Artificial intelligence. We've all heard it. Some say AI is the end of art, perhaps the end of creativity, and in my case, the end of storytelling. Hmm. Now, in my life, I've had the opportunity to work under Hollywood giants, wearing dual hats as both an assistant and a creative. I've seen movies made with budgets nearing $200 million and watched studios develop some of the biggest shows in television. But beyond that, I'm a, I'm a storyteller. I'm a filmmaker. I mean, this is a childhood ambition of mine since the age of five. As a kid, I would take my mom's desk lamp and make a film light out of it, or maybe some scrap aluminum and make my very own camera crane. Well, as I grow older, that ambition to experiment has never died. And AI is my new tool. So here I stand with my Hollywood mentorship, my filmmaker perspective, and now the advent of AI, and there's an important question that's asked. As these tools develop, does the filmmaker die? Hmm. Cue the dramatic music. <laughs> well, let's first demystify AI. What exactly is it, and how much longer do we have until we're all taken over by the Terminator? Soon. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, AI really is a broad term. It's uh, not a single entity like HAL 9000, nor is it the brainchild of a lone corporation like Skynet. Instead, it simply represents a method of creation wherein, rather than being meticulously crafted by human hand, it's given a large set of guidelines and data and essentially told to teach itself. Think of AI as a digital snowball, where once we took little bits of snow, packed them together to make a snowball, now you just take that same snow, roll it down a hill, and watch it grow bigger and bigger, all on its own. Pretty cool. But hold on. If we're using AI to make our stories, and just rolling our ideas down a hill, hoping for AI to make them bigger and bigger, then what happens to creativity? Are we restricted and suffocated by the uniformity of AI? Have we lost something in the process? Hmm. I wanted to try to find this out. I mean, we stand at the crossroads between creativity and innovation. So over the past year, a team and I set out to find out what this crossroads might look like. Together, we worked on a film called Sigma One, where the use of AI wasn't simply just used in a single use case scenario. 
nor was it the principal creative driving force. Instead, we treated AI as a collaborator. We used it through every step of the traditional filmmaking pipeline, everything from ideation to execution. You see, the integration here is key. We, our goal was to create one of the first AI films, but you have to ask yourself, what is an AI film? Well, you see, it's a balance, uh, a balance between creativity and how much AI is used in that creativity. On one hand of the spectrum, you have artists creating images generated entirely from algorithms. And on the other end of the spectrum, Hollywood studios are using AI to employ large teams to create single use case scenarios, say, de-aging Harrison Ford in Indiana Jones. But I wanted to do something new, find a middle ground of this spectrum. Integration, as I said, is key. The story of Sigma-1 began inspired by a true story between an engineer and an AI chatbot. In pre-production, tools like ChatGPT became the creative sounding board for my writer and collaborator, Drew Marin. It helped guide our script and deepen our story. And then prompt engineers would use tools such as DALI and Midjourney to create concept art that we would use to help flush out the world. And we would take that concept art, put it through runway, and begin the storyboarding process. In production, I would ask my actors to use AI chatbots tailored specifically to help them find the backstories for their characters. Backstories that may have not made it into our film otherwise. And then in post-production, Gavin Bedford, Ian Eck, Mike Joya, and artists by the name of Coffee Vectors and Druzel would use tools such as Deep Face Labs and Stable Diffusion to deep fake my actor so their face could change from one persona to the next. And lastly, in post-production, my sound designer, Geraldo Gutierrez, would use an AI voice generator from Eleven Labs to bring a voice to our character Sigma. Now, the overarching goal here was twofold. Create a captivating AI origin story, and to be a little self-aware, a little meta, we wanted to use the very tools that the story was about. So, we took these ideas and we applied AI through the entire creative process. The goal here wasn't simply to have cool new VFX, but instead, figure out a new relationship between AI and film that we could see in the future. The result was astounding. And the reason I mention the names of my crew is not merely to give them credit, because they deserve it, but to illustrate the idea that behind each of these tools are artists specifically trained on how to use them. In all, over 100 people worked on this project. And with them, alongside, was nearly 15 AI tools. And this is a piece of the result. Hi, Sigma. Hello, James. Sigma, I want you to introduce yourself to my friend Kat. She's a journalist. Hello, Kat. I am Sigma. My job is to, to learn, learn how I may best stimulate convincing human behavior. I have adopted your language, your features, your great works of art. Thank you. AI is not something we should ignore, nor should we want to. Think of a chef in a kitchen. A chef is not responsible for growing the tomatoes or raising the cow. Instead, a chef is responsible for making a meal with the ingredients they are given. Instead, a chef is given the tomatoes, is given the beef, and asked to make a meal, something new, something delicious, something greater than the sum of its parts. And in this analogy, 
AI is, serves as the farmer, working on getting better and better ingredients, making us all more creative, giving us all the better ingredients to create our own visions. And because AI is helping us in this process, we might not be able to afford the heirloom tomatoes or the Wagyu beef. But maybe now we can make something a little more Michelin star and less Chef Boyardee. <sighs> but there's something we're not addressing here. I mean, sure, with better tools comes better stories. But in that same breath, and to quote Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. There are many fears about how AI will integrate itself into the film industry. Many fear that writers' rooms will be replaced. They fear that actors' likenesses won't be protected. Fears that artists won't get credit for their work. And I'll tell you, those fears are legitimate. It will take bold decisions from legislation and from companies to decide how these tools guide and shape our industry. And the worst part about it is that it won't happen overnight. But there is a beacon of hope in all of this, believe me, because when you think about when internet first entered our home, man, we all fear the demise of the mailman. <laughs> Mail was too slow to keep up with the pace of email. We feared that the death of the mailman would happen in causality to this invention. But what happened because of that was a new era of online retail became king, and suddenly there's a demand like never before for the package delivery. We continue to innovate. We move forward. We adapt. We change. Black and white turns to color. Film to digital. 2D to 3D. It's a continuum of innovation. In the wise words of Dory from Finding Nemo, just keep swimming. <laughs> okay, so to end this, what happens when tools develop? Does the filmmaker become obsolete? Well, I'll tell you, AI is moving at such a rapid pace, it's hard to know how far these tools will go. And the more important question is, how far is too far? But from where I stand, creativity doesn't die. In the process of making Sigma 1, I got to see a team of people working together with these tools alongside them, inspiring the idea that AI could stand as a remarkable ally in this process of creativity. Let me leave you with a vision. Imagine we're all huddled around the fire, this campfire we call creativity. And next to us, we might see AI. Let's not embrace it as a rival, but perhaps treat it as something that can support us in our creative needs, something that allows us to go from innovation to innovation. It's uh, amplifying us in this process, allow AI to Stand with us in our artistic visions, illuminating our voices. Hmm. AI, where it stands today, treats itself as a companion in this creative endeavor. And the hope, as we continue forward and we decide how these tools will be used in our life, we'll find that in the result, AI is amplifying artists, not replacing them. Thank you. <laughs>